Singer-songwriter Sarah Sleen. That's pretty good alliteration, but it doesn't begin to describe the breadth of this artist's talent. She signed her first record deal at age 19, but she's also had her poetry published, she's appeared in films, had her paintings exhibited, and shared the stage with symphony orchestras. Let's find out why this talented performer just refuses to be pinned down. Here is Pickering, Ontario's Sarah Sleen. So nice to meet you. So nice to meet you as well. You, you are the most famous person ever to come out of Pickering, Ontario. You know that, eh? <laughs> I'm not sure that's true, but thank you. It's got to be true. I <laughs> no, I checked. I did my research. I think you are. Can we just start with, because, you know, I don't know you all that well. So I just want to start with what you think was going on in your childhood in Pickering three and a half decades ago that clearly ignited some kind of fire in you as an artist. Well, there's the nuclear plant, so... Ha, ha, ha. No. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, I don't know. I was always drawn... There was a piano in our house. I was always drawn to the piano, drawn to music, drawn to art, drawn to literature. But the piano and musical tools, those were the tools I picked up first. Something connected there. Yes. When yeah. your parents played piano? My, par my mother actually was learning the piano when I was in utero. So that's the whole theory behind me and music. Do you think there's something there? Like legitimately? There could be, because no, 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 I mean, no one else is in my family. Interesting. I, now, you, you ended up going into the arts, obviously, but... but I thought you were going to be a cardiologist once upon a time. <laughs> yes, it's Is that true? true. I was very interested in science. I still actually am very interested in science. I listen to a lot of um, science podcasts, and I'm interested in the intersection, intersection between that and philosophy. Um, but the way that that always was expressed in me was always through music. It would always come out in lyrics. It would always um, be poems and things like that. So I, I think the world has been spared my cardiology career. Who knows? <laughs> you know, it might have been the next Christian Barnhart. Who knows? And done something amazing. Do you, do you know, was there like a moment where you actually recall thinking, okay, I guess I'm not going to be a cardiologist. I'm going to be a singer, songwriter, artist, painter, poet, etc. I never had a moment where I was like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to be in the arts. Never. So you still don't know what you're going to be when you grow up. I don't really. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, because you do so many different things, I need to better understand why you do all these very different things, because most people want to get fabulous focusing at one thing, and sure. you've apparently gotten fabulous focusing on a lot of different things. So what are you trying to figure out? That's very kind of you to say. Um, I, 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 I prioritize music. I feel like music is, I have the more than 10,000 hours there, and, and I, I really feel like I know the tools well. But again, in music, there are so many avenues to pursue. Um, avenues of mastery that you can can go after mm -hmm. and I mean I love songwriting but for a while there after doing it for 20 years I was like oh I want to I want to orchestrate better mm -hmm. or you know and after many years of, of learning that craft and getting better at that I, like, I want to do this with film so I mean it's just this constant cascade of, of uh, pursuit and and that keeps me sort of intellectually engaged spiritually engaged and, uh, yeah, it's led to this sort of colorful, weird, manic existence. Well, I told you before we started, I'm kind of a Sinatra guy. So my musical appreciation kind of stops after 1998 <laughs> when he died. So I've got a lyric of yours here, and you're going to have to explain what this means, okay? Sure. You wrote, there's more wisdom in the iris bud than all of our centuries of words, which is a lovely line. Thank but you. you have to tell me what it means. Sure. Okay, well, that is from a song called The Cosmic Ballet. And uh, I believe I may have inadvertently stolen that line from uh, the character uh, Leonard Nimoy's character in Star Trek. From Spock? Uh, yes, I'm not. In, I'm not entirely sure, but okay. the cosmic ballet to me. You didn't. Okay. Well, I'm, maybe I did. I'm maybe. a Star Trek nerd. I know every line <laughs> Spock did. said, and he never said that. <laughs> well, needless to say. The, the entire song is about um, my awe at the magnitude and mystery of the universe. And um, in the first line of that song, I'm refuting T.S. Eliot, right? Um, some say April is the cruelest month. Mm. Um, uh, I forget the next line, actually, of my own song. But uh, <laughs> refuting T.S. Eliot's um, remark that this world uh, brings back these broken promises. Every spring, there, you know, death is transcended, and it's, it's, we don't know why. And I think in T.S. Eliot's view, he's kind of mad that we do. He wants things to end and just end, so they make sense. Um, but I, I think that it, that line you're talking about, the iris bud line, 
just the, it's the, like Dylan Thomas, the force through the green fuse which drives the flower. That is, to me, my entire spiritual understanding of the world. It's mysterious, it's um, recurrent, it's never ending. It's just this strange magical force that animates the universe. And, you know, so much ink has been spilled on what is actually running the show and why there are stars and wars and, and bacteria and just this staggering multitude of phenomena. But when you watch a flower grow, it's almost a Zen practice, mm -hmm. right? It's like there's something, there's an intelligence that is beyond my understanding. And, you know, as I said, all of this millennia of ink that has been spilled on this very thing, it, it kind of doesn't even come close to the actual thing itself. Mm. Okay, that was a sublime answer to a <laughs> really sublime question, I thought. Here now is going to be a perfectly ridiculous question to follow sure. up with. I think there have been more than 20 songs written with the word Sarah in the title. Which is your favorite? Sarah, Sarah. No kidding. Love that no, one. No, but that's not your favorite. Well, actually. That was my favorite until I heard. Bob Dylan's? No, not him. Oh, come I'm on. I'm not a Dylan guy. No, no, no. <laughs> But that star, Jefferson Starship, you like that one, eh? I Storms love are it. brewing in your eyes? Storms are brewing in your eyes. Come on, that's gold. Okay, can I tell you what's giving that one some competition? <laughs> Sheldon, if you would, roll the clip, please. That is so fabulous. Thank that you. is just fantastic. But now I need to ask some questions about this, okay? Sure. Who did all the drawing? That was me. I know. That's fantastic. Okay, that's number one. Number two, who's the Sarah in that song? I think that I know the answer me. to that one. <laughs> Why did you have to tell yourself that you would be loved again someday? Oh, you had to ask. Well, like you did. <laughs> okay, I asked the question because I don't know anything about sure, your background. Sure. And so that's a very provocative lyric. Definitely. And so I need to know. Well, I mean, like it's also, there's also the abstract general nature of such a statement, you will be loved again. It's, it's sort but of- But that's not what you're going for no, here. No, well maybe yeah, not. Nice try. Um, thank you. I, I feel like a lot of the time my writing, it comes from this sort of like, the third partiness of our own consciousness, right? So a lot of the time I will be writing to console myself, to encourage myself, to, you know, it, it, it's often, uh, it, it feels like that. And I have a lot in my catalog that, that are of a similar vein. And um, it works. I find that it works. Okay, Celine, you're dodging my question here. Why did you have to tell yourself that you would be loved again? <laughs> okay, well, I was married for four years. I mean, I've had lots of broken relationships in the past, um, but I was married for four years. To whom? To uh, another musician. Okay. And uh, we broke up, and it was very, uh, I mean, like, m my mama raised me right, so she told me to take the high road always. So I refrain from commenting on any of that in the press, although I was not afforded the same courtesy. <laughs> your mama's a wise person. That's right. So, so, I mean, I didn't write any music about him or um, the experience until I felt um, at a place where it had been really digested and metabolized, and I, I waited until I'd kind of come on the other side. And this is one of those songs. So I can infer when you write, he's been to the Shadowlands, mm. that's a bad place. Mm. You want to tell me more about the Shadowlands, <laughs> or are we moving on? This is actually a, a man that I was dating for a while post-divorce. and oh, that's a different guy. That's a different guy. Oh, OK. And um, he was a fascinating artist, very celebrated artist in this country, but very dark human being. So 
I had to sort of distance myself from him, but we did have a, a sort of collision of sorts that that was very inspiring to me artistically. Fascinating. Mm. That's a bit of Dell. Should I write it? a book? I should probably write Why a not? tell all Listen, book. Have you not <laughs> have you not written a book yet? You've not done anything yet. else. Maybe it's, it's time. It's on the list, Steve. <laughs> okay, here's another song. Now this one is this uh, really motivated by a chance meeting with somebody on a go train? Okay. Um, I've immortalized not, the go train. I was going to say, not exactly the place where one assumes you are going to find great artistic inspiration for... Uh, well, let's see a piece of this. Sheldon, show you got this one standing by? Let's roll it. Every rhythm is the beat. Every rhythm is the beat. One body blown to pieces. One light, the light of us. One God in all religion. One love, one love. This is the cracking of the eggshell. The shedding of the skin. Beautiful. You have a beautiful voice. Thank you. No, you know this. You have a beautiful voice. Thank okay, you. bunch of questions coming out of this. Do you know all the people in that video? No, these are people on the streets of Toronto. We asked them if they would hold a one love sign. And you know, surprisingly, uh, almost all the people we stopped were interested huh. in holding that sign for 10 seconds. Even the guy lip syncing? You didn't know him? No. Interesting. Okay, <laughs> here's another lyric. The authority and guidance you need is inside you. Mm. Is that the case for you? Well, I don't know if you're sensing a theme here, but I've always been very uh, spiritually hungry, thirsty, interested, curious. And um, none of the formal religions did it for me. They never really, I didn't get that sort of internal click, like, yes, this is it, this makes sense. Um, and also, none of them for me sort of reconciled the macro and the micro. Like, like I was saying before, the sort of totality of what is. I just couldn't find a sort of uh, worldview that that made all of that made make sense um, but I do have these moments like the moment on the grow train when I met um, a man who was essentially a drug dealer hold, carrying a weapon what and, yes and we had uh, this beautiful conversation in which he began to cry in front of me talking about his life situation how he felt trapped and we had this really um, very human heart-to-heart and th those are the moments where I think something's in charge. Something, there's some kind of organizing force bringing these situations into being for some kind of reason. And we all participate, and yet we don't really know how and why. And that, I mean, that's as specific as my worldview gets. Hmm. But it's, um, it's as spiritually nourishing as I need it to be. How'd you know he was a drug dealer? He told me. How'd you know he was packing? Because I saw it. You saw he had a gun on him. On the go train. Yeah, and I was alone in the car. I was alone in the car, so. Um, and you trusted him? Well, the the situation was I'd been meditating. I'd been trying to do a meditation practice, um, and I was alone on the car on a Sunday night. And I closed my eyes. And I'm like, I didn't do it this morning. I'm going to do it today, because I got to keep my streak going. And he got on, and I my eyes were still closed. But then I felt this sort of menacing charge. I opened my eyes, and he was looking down at me like he was. Here it is, lady, you're about to get mugged. And uh, we had this little moment, and instead of me jumping, I just kind of looked at him and I went, hi, kind of cheerfully. And the sort of consequent rearrangement of uh, molecules in his brain, like he was completely not expecting that, and he kind of recalculated and stepped back, and then we had this incredible conversation. For how long? For the remainder of my trip, which was maybe 25 minutes, 20 minutes. It clearly changed your life. I tremble when I speak about it. I'm actually trembling right now. Do you know if it changed his? We corresponded for two years. Really? Yes. What kinds of things? He would write me emails about where he was. He was trying to get out of the sort of terrible loop yeah. in his life. And um, he, yeah, he kept in touch with me and, and told me what was going on with his children. And, How old um, the guy was he? He was 31 when I met him, and he had two, two girls. Huh. 
And I, I don't know what's happened to him since. I've lost touch with him, but um, it was a very powerful moment for both of us. Have you had anything else in your life <laughs> like that happen to you that ended up being the inspiration for some kind of song? All the time. All the time, really, really. <laughs> really. All the time, all the time. Yes. That's a pretty charmed existence in some no, respects. No, well, I mean, it's intense, too, yeah. and it can be, you know, equally tragic and sad. Um, but I think when, you, when you're really looking at the world and you're really um, eager to understand its inner working, sometimes it will it will show itself to be this kind of um, weirdly managed, orchestrated, organized place. Like serendipities will happen and things like that. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got a few minutes left and I want to touch on a couple of more things. I don't, again, I don't know. You got any kids? No. You want kids? <laughs> I mean, I'm not volunteering for anything or something, but is that I something like, that interests you? I feel like, am I in therapy? <laughs> is that yes, something that interests you at some And point I'm with someone right now, and we're thinking about it. Oh, isn't that interesting? Yes. Oh, terrific. Okay, because <laughs> I'm, th I mean, the question I was getting to here is, who you are now and how your artistic expression kind of reveals itself as a, you know, young, single, without kids kind of person will dramatically change if you ever have children. Definitely. And definitely. are you ready for that, I guess is what I'm asking. Oh, I feel like you, no one is really ready for it, right? I mean, you're, you're giving birth to another consciousness, another, another being. I don't think that anyone is really prepared for that. Um, but I've talked to people, like uh, Melanie Doan and I have talked about this, Amy sure, Sky and I have, have sure. talked about this, because it just, ch it changes what they want to write about, it changes how they, like where they sing from inside. Priorities, absolutely, priorities absolutely. too. Absolutely. Well, I think, you know, there's, I've had enough um, years of narcissism, <laughs> to be frank. I mean, I really, I really have. I've devoted most of my life to my own pursuits and um, I'm not going to to shrink that that hunger for music and and the desire to express myself. That's not going to fade, but it is going to change. I'm aware of that. But I'm ready. I'm like really, really looking forward to taking care of other things. You know, I feel like that was turning forty for me was like. Mm. I wasn't going to say that. You know, I, I knew how old you were, but I'm I wasn't going to say. I'm all right with it. You are. I'm all right with it. Four decades on planet Earth. <laughs> um, but I, I am. I'm looking forward to to shifting the focus a little. I'm less and less inclined to post pictures of myself and be like, you know, hey, everybody, look at me, look at me. Like, I just, it's really, in your 20s, you're all about that. And mm. in your 30s, you're like, this is maybe getting old. And in your 40s, you're like, this is old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you are looking, you are ready for the next level of depth. Yes within which to start exploring and trying to understand yes. this crazy world of ours. Yes. I can't imagine what is going to emerge from you as a result of all that. Won't that be exciting? I'm pretty sure it's going to involve a symphony orchestra. Well, that would be fantastic. <laughs> and as I told you before, you've got to do the Great American Songbook. I will, right? Steve. You really I will do. Mark my words. You've got that kind of voice <laughs> that you could absolutely do the same music that Sinatra did and Tony Bennett and wow. I mean, look what Rod Stewart did with these songs. Wow, you thank know? you. you you must do that. <laughs> Note yourself. If only as a favor to me, you must do that. Sarah, I can't tell you how excited I am to have met you and that we've had this opportunity to talk. Thank and you. I now have a number one new song with Sarah in the title. Yay! <laughs> um, and storms may or may not be brewing in your eyes, but it was great to have you here at TVO tonight. <laughs> That's Sarah Sleen. Thank you so much. Thank you, Steve. Pleasure. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. Helping businesses stay on the right side of change with strategic thinking, insightful decisions, and business leadership. Are you on the right side of change? Ask an Ontario CPA.